Hi everyone, it's Jenny here from Angel Handmade Paper Craft. Today I am working with Heart Craft Paper and I'm working with one of their digital stamps, Merry Kisses. I have printed my image out onto Express It Blending cardstock and I am colouring up using Copic markers. So let's get started. I am using some of the N markers today to create the white effect. I'm using the N2 marker, the N0, and then I'm using the 0 marker to blend that out. And I'm also using some R20 on their little cheeks. So I'm just working my way through. When I'm doing white areas, I always start with the darkest marker first and then start pulling that colour out. And then I'll go in with the zero marker and blend all that out and create that white effect. So normally when I'm doing normal colours, I do put my lightest colour down first and then go darkest to light. But different, it's very different when you're trying to make those white areas. You don't want to add too much ink in, um, otherwise you will lose that white effect. So I'm just working my way through slowly. I'm grabbing all of my colours out ready to go. And I'm using some red markers. So I'm using the R35, R37 and R39 markers. So now I am starting with my lightest marker, adding a coat down of that. Being very careful, you can oversaturate your paper using the R marker, so you do need to be very careful. So I'm just colouring those down first, giving them a little time to soak into the cardstock. Doing all of those red areas at the same time. Okay, and now I'm going in with my darkest colour, so I'm using the R39 to add in all of my dark areas. And down to my R37 to start pulling that colour out. I have sped this up just a tiny bit, so I'm not this quick of a colourer. <laughs> Um, and I do try to work on one area as I go when I start blending. That way I'm not letting the ink dry too fast now. So I'm using my R35 marker now to blend all of that out. Just flicking my way through. And trying to get a nice smooth blend from one colour to the other. So that's the little bow done. And now I'm going on to the little Santa hat on the little boy. So I'm using my R39 marker to try and create all of those dark areas. And then I'll go in with my R37 marker and start pulling that out. So my markers are due for a refill shortly, so it is taking me a little bit more work to get all of those colours to blend in nice and easily. And then I will go in with my R35 marker and pull all those colours out together. Now, like I said, you do need to be very careful that you don't over blend, over saturate your cardstock because it will make it quite difficult to get that colour back in, even using your colourless blender. Alright, so that's his little Santa hat done. Trying to work out what area I'm going to start on next. So I'm just fixing up a little tiny bit of the red did bleed on the left hand side there. So I'm just trying to fix that up before I start doing the rest of my white areas. Alright, so I'm going to go in with my N markers to do those white areas on his centre hat. Going in with my N0 and then back to the 0 marker. And now I'm just doing his little bauble. Is it called a bauble? Yeah, that'll do. Blending that out using the 0 colourless blender. Alright, so that is now all of my white areas done. So I'm going to start working on my little penguins. So I'm going to use some of the toner markers today. Something different for me. Just to give them just a little bit of different shade of black, I suppose you could say. So I'm using the T6, the T8 and the T10. So I'm just working my way through. I think the kids needed me in between there, so I had to drop my project and go back in. So that's why some of the colours there do look a little bit darker. All right, so just putting a coat down of the T6 marker. And then I'll go in with my T10, back to my T8, and then back to the T6. So just working my way through. 
I just had to clean my marker off there. That's why I've got off screen for a second. Just before I end up with ink all over my fingernails and all over my hands. I do hold my markers down quite low. That's the most comfortable way for me to hold them. I know that people do recommend that you hold them up a little bit higher, but it just doesn't work for me. So putting all of that color down with the darkest marker. And now I'm going in with my T8 marker, just giving it a quick clean as well while I've got all the cleaning stuff out. So this is now the T8, so I'm using that to pull in the T10 into the skin. And then I'll go back to the T6 and pull it all out and blend it all in together. I like these toner markers in the black areas because it still gets a little bit of grey, but you can still see those highlights as well. So I really like them. And they blend quite nicely too, actually. So generally when you're using your, it doesn't matter whether it's the cool greys, the toner greys or the neutral greys, I normally just go three markers and I'll go either odds or even. So I'll either go like 6, 8, 10 or 2, 4, 6 or 5, 7, 9, whatever, but that's normally the way that I work it. All right, so that's my little penguin on the left done. So I'm just going to finish him off. So I'm now doing his little... Do you call it a beak? Not sure. He's, <laughs> and his feet. So I'm using the YR14 and I'm using YR18. With my orange markers, I do kind of swap and change what blends I use. I kind of just um, wing it most of the time and just grab two colours out of my Copic storage that I think will look nice together. And then that's what I colour using. So I think something kids needed me again here. So I've jumped off screen. They're so needy, these children. <laughs> Don't they understand this is my craft time? I love them to bits. Um, so blending all of those out now back with the YR14 marker. All right. Adding some shadow in underneath this left penguin. So I've uh, using the warm grey. So I'm using the W3 and the W1 marker. It's just giving that marker a clean as well. All right, so that's my penguin on the left finished. I'm just doing his holly and leaves. So I'm using some green markers, G24 and G28. Now they are very, very different color markers, but they blend beautifully. So sometimes it's not about, you know, what, people suggest to you to use it's all about you know making what color choices that are comfortable for you you may be able to blend two colors together that somebody else may not be able to do so I'm using uh, some of those orange markers on her little necklace there and I'm just blending out her stomach a little bit more so that was the YR14 and YR18 that I used there It's just giving her a, a gold necklace. Now I'm going in with her little beak and her feet. Blending all of those out. So that was just, again, that was the YR14 and YR18. Adding in the shadows and then pulling that colour back out again. When it's only small areas like this, I do tend to just stick to two markers. Just doing my R20, I forgot to do his little cheeks on the left hand side there. Sorry, just pushed off my image to the side there. I think I was fixing up the ground a little bit more. So now we're going on to finish colouring the little girl on the right. So again, just using those T markers. T6, T8, and T10. It's 11 o'clock in the morning and I'm already yawning. I haven't been sleeping very well lately. Lots going on in life, all that sort of stuff. 
I'm one of those people that uh, overthinks everything when I should be sleeping. My mind just doesn't turn off. So sometimes that wears me down. So that was the T6 marker. Now I'm going in with the T10 to add the shadows. I am a turner, so I like to turn my image around and color whatever way makes me most comfortable. You don't, again, need to do everything the same way that everybody else does it. If it makes you comfortable and it's easier for you, then you go ahead and you do it. Now back to the T6 marker to pull all of those colours out and blend it all together. I love these little guys, they're so cute. Alright, so just now going on to the head portion of her body, adding all the shadow underneath that little bow on her head. And then just working my way around. Now back to their T8 marker, adding in a little bit more colour, pulling out that T10 just a little bit, and then back to the T6 marker to blend it all together and pull it all into her head. Alright, so now I'm just adding a little bit more colour into her belly there. Just fixing up anything that has run into her body. And that is my image complete. And I hope you guys have loved watching me colour today and I'll see you all soon. Bye. Thank you for watching Heartcraft Paper. You can visit us on our website at www.heartcraftpaper.com. For more videos and tutorials like these, don't forget to subscribe.